In searching the subterranean caverns and passageways of Thor for Tarzan and his companions, Atea, white queen of the yellow men, accompanied by Wong Tai and a strong guard of the yellow-skinned giants, comes upon the fugitives in the ancient arsenal cavern of the Taurians. In the ensuing fight, Major Ashley is killed. In the face of overwhelming odds, the remainder of the party is forced to surrender. Because it was by Mungo's hand that Major Ashley died, Tarzan claims the ancient right of Tor and challenges the yellow giant to a fight to the death. Mungo accepts the challenge. The ape man and his companions, excepting Jeanette, are led away to the paddock of the Torian war elephants, there to await the day set for the battle. Through the influence of Wong Tai, Jeanette is to be quartered in the palace among Atea's woman slaves. On their way to the queen's chambers, Jeanette learns from the Chinese that he apparently turned traitor in the best interests of his friends. As they halt before the door to Atea's room, Wong intimates to Jeanette that he is formulating a plan for their escape. Well, Lanuk, enter Jeanette Burton. You also, Wong Tai. I would speak with you. Well, now that you have me alone here, Atea, what are you going to do with me? You will remain near me, Jeanette Burton, until your lover dies by the hand of Mungo. Thereafter, we shall see. Why do you insist that Tarzan is more to me than simply a friend? Because I am not blind. You shall both die because you have lied. Tarzan, when the time is ripe, shall perish in the public arena. <laughs> Mungo will see to that. And you, I have not decided as to how you will be punished. You are quite certain that Mungo will kill Tarzan? He will strike the death blow when I raise my hand. So, Mungo is a mighty man in battle. Were he not the greatest of all Torian warriors, he would not be their chief. Mm, he proved his might by spearing my uncle in the back. Tarzan will kill your great warrior, Atea, as easily as he killed Tonga and Toldo, the lion, into whose den you pushed me. You told Tarzan that I thrust you into the arena? Suppose I did. What of it? It is false. It was an accident. However, I do not like your manners, Janet Burton. I am Atea, queen of Thor. Remember that hereafter when you enter my presence as my personal body slave. You are... Your personal slave. Have you care, Jeanette? Do not antagonize her? Yes, Jeanette Burton. As my slave, those garments you wear are filthy rags. You will be clothed as my other women are clothed. You shall be one of them. Tanya! Antaluk Tanya. Nuk to Lal, Bano to Maruk. Tanya does not understand English, Jeanette Burton. If she did, she could not answer. She has no tongue. None of my women have tongues. <laughs> if you remain among my slaves long enough, you will also be without a tongue. You, you fiend. <laughs> Go now. I shall call you when I need you. Aruk Tanya. So, Wang Tai, and what think you of my arrangement? They are worthy of you, illustrious one. As I have said, the heaven-born is an extremely clever woman. You, Wong Tai, spoke with the woman softly as we returned from the lower passageways. What did you say to her? I held out to her the hope of escape, illustrious one. Escape? From Tor? And you tell me that? Wong Tai, if you plan to deceive me, you will die suddenly. A minister who fears death, heaven-born, will not be faithful. However, the resplendent one has condescended to credit this person with possessing a certain amount of adroitness. Would it then be an act of wisdom to deceive my queen? You are deep, Wong Tai. I do not understand you. My conversation with Janet Burton was brief. I merely held out the hope to her of escape, not from Thor, but from an unpleasant death. If she accepts the heaven-born so generous proposal to forget her love for Tarzan and go away without him... And her reply to that? Nothing definite, illustrious one. She believes that Tarzan will kill Mungo and that he will somehow save her and her friends. <laughs> the woman will see her champion killed in the public arena. She will see her friends, one by one, torn to pieces by the lions. And her fate, O oh heaven-born? I do not know yet. When I have broken her spirit and she ceases to amuse me as my slave... I shall devise a pleasant fate. <laughs> <laughs>
for her. Perhaps this person has a suggestion to offer in that respect which might add to the amusement of my queen. Speak then, Wang Tai. When is the combat between Tarzan and Mongo to take place? It is for me to set the day. I shall make it soon. And what does the victor of such a contest gain? His life and great honor as a warrior. And is that all? What else would he gain? A trophy, a prize offered by the resplendent one would be a greater incentive for the contestants to win, would it not, O oh heavenborn? You mean... <laughs> I begin to understand, Wang Tai. You mean to give Janet Burton to the victor as a prize. <laughs> Exactly, O oh heavenborn. She would make Mongo an attractive uh, wife, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, Wang Tai. The woman will go to Mongo. An amusing idea, my worthy counselor. An idea that appeals to my sense of humor. I had no doubt, illustrious one, that it would. Meanwhile, in a great enclosure of ponderous timbers and huge stone pillars near a distant part of the outer wall of Tor, Tarzan, Darno, Uka, and O'Rourke find themselves standing at one end of a stone-lined alley running between two long rows of large stalls, the paddocks of the war elephants of Tor. Some of the stalls are empty. Others contain the huge blue-black jungle beasts used by the yellow giants as burden bearers and war chargers. A little way down the alley, a great black bull elephant strains savagely against the heavy timbers of his corral. Just beyond reach of his trunk, several Torian slaves stand uneasily eyeing the loudly trumpeting jungle titan. Rutang, master of elephant slaves, grins evilly at his new helpers. Singling out Tarzan, he thrusts a heavy elephant goat into the ape man's hands and pushes him roughly toward the great beast. <laughs> you, Tarzan... You go make black mother good. <laughs> Tarzan drops the goad. Unhurriedly, he walks toward the raging elephant. As he nears the corral, the slaves make way for him. The great bull, his small red eyes gleaming wickedly, glares at the advancing ape man. With huge trunk curled back, ready to strike, the monstrous beast shuffles rapidly forward. By the gods of Rotor, the man walks to his death. The beast will kill him. Ah, oh, Bigaddy, he's... He's getting over the fence into the corral with the brute. If the beast kills him, I'll be taking it out on this fella Ratang, or whatever his name is, with one of these boat hooks. Renika Tarzan, the brute, he is savage. Control! Control! Watch, Uka, Orok, you will see something interesting. Control! Bando, Tanto, Ko Abulu, Gogo, Yo, Tarzan. Look, he stands before him, lowers his trunk. It is as though he understands Tarzan's words. Oh, Bigari, he's, he's patting the brute's trunk, and the big fellow seems to like it. Dando, Dando. Nala, Tarzan. Oh, yeah, see how gently he wraps his trunk around Tarzan and lifts him up to his back? Oh, would you look at that now, like a couple of old friends. Oh, oh, no, you see that, eh? Tarzan, Tanala, Tando, Tanala. How carefully the beast lifts him to the ground. One would think he had trained the elephant himself. My no, Uka. Tanto is Tarzan's name for all elephants. Oh, that gibberish he's talking to the brute. What the devil is it? I've heard most of the African dialects at one time or another, but this one's strange to me. It is the language of the great apes, Orok. For many years, Tarzan spoke no other. It is unbelievable. Rutong, Black Maluk, as you call him, is a very dangerous elephant. We four are the only ones he will let come near him. We'll take care of him and train him, and that one in the next stall. Mm, Tarzan, good elephant man. Black Maluk and Kalu, bad elephant. White man, take care of him all right. We'll have to stay with them day and night until they're trained. We'll sleep in the little shed there. Ah, be got it, Lieutenant. They don't get Terry or Rock into that corral Sinos. with them. Quiet. Tarzan does nothing without a reason. Come on, Darno. A rock. Uka. Show no fear of Tantor. If he reaches out his trunk to you, touch it and stand still. Let him get your scent. Both Black Maluk and Kalu will be friendly. Oh. 
I get what you're driving at. A chance of escape, eh? For Uka and Darno, yes. You and I, O'Rourke, will stay here. You, because of Jeanette. I, well, I'm going to fight Mungo. You have a plan, then, for our escape? Yes. Tanto. Tanto? It will be dark in a moment. We're going into Black Maluk's corral. You, Darno, and Uka will get on his back. Lie flat. O'Rourke will open the gate, and I'll turn Tanto into the central alley. He'll carry you to the wall. From his back, you can reach the top. Ah, of course you can prone. And this time, I shall take a rope. There are several here in the shed. But will that ugly brute carry us, Tarzan? He will if I tell him to. And if he makes a lot of noise, act savage. Don't worry. Just be ready to leave his back when you reach the wall. We shall go to Rotor and return with our warriors as soon as it is possible. When we have surrounded the city, you, Tarzan of the Apes, you will see that the outer gates are open to us. They'll be open. Get your rope, Darno, and come. I think we can chance it now. Uh, I have the rope. Uh, sweet to pray, I am ready. Come on, then. All of you. Oh, Faith. That devil looks big in the dark. Come here, Uka. Ho, oh, Tantor. Nala, Malgani. You next, Darno. <laughs> Nala, Tamangani. Tantor. Oh, as gentle as a lamb. He picked them two up like he would eggs. Yes. Go and take down the bars to the corral. Then stand aside. Eho, Panda. Malgani Utor Tantor. Darno, my cat on his back. Both of you. I'm going to send him out. All right, Tarzan. Tanala. Tantor. Home go Tantor. 